Ten out of ten on Kenji Arata. Kenji Arata was thought to be the second person killed by a robot, but the first Japanese man to be killed by one when he died at a Kawasaki Heavy Industries factory in Akashi, Japan in 1981. He was trying to repair the robot at the time of the accident until the robot pinned him against another machine and killed him. Attempts to free Arata from the robot's grip were unsuccessful. The robot had been taken offline for repairs and was separated from the other robots at the factory by a wire mesh fence, and it was supposed to remain shut down whenever anyone opened the door and entered the confines of the fence. Yurata had, for some unknown reason, or at least a reason only known to himself, jumped over the fence into the area, therefore not activating the shutdown mechanism. His body rubbed against the machine and inadvertently switched it on, eh, which caused it to come to life and pin him against another machine, which, yeah, that's, yeah, yikes. And at 9, Robert Williams. Robert Williams was unfortunately the first human to be killed by a robot. Williams, who was an assembly line worker at Ford's plant in Flat Rock, Michigan, was killed on January 25, 1979 when he was gathering spare parts at a storage facility at the plant, alongside a robotic arm that was lifting the heavier items. Williams was killed after the arm of the robot hit him as he climbed up to a shelf to retrieve some casts, and ironically, the robot was supposed to be the one retrieving the casts, but it kept giving wrong information regarding the number of casts left on that shelf, forcing Williams to have to climb up to count him. A jury determined that Williams' death was caused by lax safety measures, including one that should have caused the robot to make warning sounds when around a human, and the victim's family was awarded $10 million in damages. And a number of recommendations were made about improving safety standards when humans were working alongside robots, so that's something at least. In it, a Junior Wheel Inc. At Junior Wheel Inc., a motor vehicle parts manufacturing company located in Norton, Ohio, an employee tragically lost their life in 2001 due to an accident involving a robot on the assembly line. As the employee was cleaning up their work area at the end of their shift, they accidentally entered an area of the assembly line where the robots had not yet been deactivated. The robot, mistaking the employee for a machine that needed to be assembled, grabbed them by the neck and suffocated them by pinning them under a wheel rim. While not exactly the same, the idea of being pinned by a robot and suffocating seems like how I'd picture dying from a spring lock failure. Most of this list isn't going to be exact one for ones, of course, since spring locks don't exist in the real world as they do in the games, but suffocation would probably be one of the ways you'd suffer the most if you didn't die instantly from all the robot parts. The spring lock failures from the games being where the mechanism in the suits that holds back the robot parts enough for a human to use it as a costume break and allow the endoskeleton and whatnot to go back to where they'd be in animatronic mode. We haven't seen a true proper spring lock and so we can't really be sure about where the parts would go, but if they didn't end up replacing your bones or organs and killing you instantly, I think suffocation would be a main factor behind the death, because I mean, there's gotta be a lot around that area. And it's 7, Devin. The story The New Kid from 1.35am, the third Fast Bear Frights book revolves around Devin, Mick, and Kelsey. Devin and Mick are outcasts from their class, and they aren't really popular, you know, they aren't cool, but when the new kid Kelsey arrived at their school, they tried to make a new friend. Despite Kelsey being charismatic and adored by everyone in the school, School. Over time, Devin ends up growing jealous because of that, you know, since Kelsey has everything he wants. So, in an act of revenge or in an attempt to gain control, Devin hatches a plan to lure Kelsey to an abandoned Freddy Fazbear's and trap him in a spring lock suit for a few hours. To try to humble him, I guess? I don't know, why do you know what a spring lock suit does? Like, do you just chill in it for like an hour or two? I don't know. Why do you know about this? Either way, the plan goes horribly wrong, and after getting in the suit, the spring locks fail, as expected, because it's a FNAF book, and it causes the blood to soak into the fur of the animatronic, pull on the ground, you know, all the grisly scenes that you'd expect from this. Devin and Mick then leave Kelsey for dead so that they won't get in trouble, but then something doesn't feel right. So, a week later, Devin returns to the the scene of the crime to make sure that Kelsey's body is still there. He sticks his hand in the animatronic's mouth and snap. Aha, the spring locks fail again, as per usual, and Devin gets his hand stuck inside the suit and bleeds out, but not before seeing that the body in the suit had black hair instead of Kelsey's blonde hair. Ah, uh, that's the only other spring lock failure that we actually like know happened, so yeah, I'm putting it on the list. And it's six, Dallas Police. On July 7th, 2016, Micah Johnson carried out an attack in Dallas that resulted in the deaths of five police officers officers and injured nine more officers and two civilians. The attack took place during a protest and Johnson initially targeted three officers, killing them and wounding three more officers and one civilian. He then fled to El Centro College, where he attacked another officer before barricading himself inside and 
attacking some more. A standoff ensued, during which the police tried to negotiate with him, who threatened to set off explosives. The police offered him a choice to surrender or face the possibility of being confronted with force, and Johnson did not surrender. Thus, the police ultimately using a robot equipped with a brick of C4 to get inside and, let's say, deal with the event. It did damage the robot though, but this marked the first time a police department in the US actually used a bomb-laden robot to... for, for reasons other than disarming a bomb. Yeah. Halfway through in at number 5, Joshua Brown. Joshua Brown was the first person to be killed in a self-driving car accident. On May 7th of 2016, while driving a Tesla Model S through Williston, Florida, the car was unable to distinguish between an 18-wheel tractor trailer and the bright sky. As a result, the Tesla collided with the trailer, tearing off the roof of the car, and then crashed through two fences and a pole before coming to a stop. Tesla initially tried to deflect responsibility for the accident, pointing out that this was the first accident involving the Model S in 130 million miles of driving, which was below the industry average of 94 million miles, but Tesla also emphasized that the autopilot system was not perfect and required drivers to keep their hands on the steering wheel. However, investigations by the National Transport Safety Board revealed that Brown had his hands on the steering wheel for only 25 seconds out of the 37 minute trip, and neither he nor the autopilot applied the brakes. The airbags did not deploy until after the car had left the road and hit some trees, which I think is absolutely terrifying as well, but considering that the police found a micro SD card containing a Harry Potter movie at the accident scene, the driver of the truck claiming that Brown was watching a Harry Potter movie at the time of the accident, and two laptops being found in the car, this seems like more user error than a uh, fault of the vehicle. And at four, William Afton. I'm pretty sure that we all know this story by now, alright? Everything was going well at first. They couldn't pin him down, he was on his way to immortality, and then once William discovered Remnant though, he started to spiral. He wanted to use it for fuel and to use to make his life truly immortal, so in an effort to study it further, William lured the possessed animatronics to a back room that they couldn't access and dismantled them, planning to melt down their endoskeletons to make soul infused metal. However, by doing this, he unknowingly released the souls of the victims that he had claimed oh so long ago, and, uh, you know, they're ghost kids, so they scared him. He tried to scare them by fleeing into his spring bonnie suit, which probably also made him feel more powerful, but his haste, coupled with the leaking in the room, because of course he didn't really care about the foundations of the place, causes the spring lock suit to fail, crushing him in torturous agony for the next 30 years. However, he didn't die from this. <laughs> of course, because he was being kept alive by the spirit of another victim. So he went on to live that agonizing pain for 30 years, but you know what? He deserved it. And you can't say that this doesn't belong on the list, okay? As the only actual Springlock failure to be confirmed as game canon, some are probably going to consider this the only one that should have been on the list, but hey. I make the rules. <laughs> Getting close to the end in at number 3, Lenko Inc. Lenko Inc. is a company which makes the plastic products for a number of industries, including the clear plastic cases used in the packaging of CDs. You know, CDs are those like, they're like Blu-ray discs that you would get your dad for Christmas, but for music and not as durable. And the, cla and the case is the stuff that people were cutting up to make hologram projectors out of with their phones. You know, you just place it on the screen. Yeah. Unfortunately though, one of the robotic arms used in this manufacturing process killed an employee at the factory back in 2007. According to accident investigators, the arm of the robot malfunctioned and moved unexpectedly, striking a male worker in the head and ribs, causing severe blunt force trauma. It was reported that the employee survived for two weeks in the local hospital, but eventually succumbed to the serious injuries. My brain to draw crazy parallels between that and Crying Child from FNAF 4, who had severe head trauma and died of his injuries in the hospital later on, uh, which sends a chill down my spine, because that's... Hey, yikes. But ultimately, in at number two, Ramji Lal. In 2015, a robot at the SKH Metals factory in Manisha, India, caused the death of a 24 year old Ramji Lal, an employee at the factory. The robot, which was used to lift and weld metal parts together, accidentally stabbed Lal in the abdomen while he was attempting to adjust a mispositioned metal sheet. Lal was taken to the hospital after the accident, but he later died from internal bleeding caused by the crushed ribs and abdomen. Despite initial reports suggesting that Lal may have also been electrocuted, an autopsy found no evidence evidence of this and was ultimately determined that he died from the injuries sustained in the accident with the robot. However, the police reportedly stood by the death by electrocution, which is odd, and is way too close to the cops from FNAF, ignoring just the animatronics being compared to human corpses. Um, like, 
it wasn't a thing. I don't know why they were doing that. But again, it's obviously not the same thing, but definitely some interesting parallels that at least my brain can see. You probably can't, but you know what? I'm weird. And finally, and at number one, Anna Maria Vital. In 2009, a malfunctioning robot at Golden State Foods in Los Angeles resulted in the death of, of Anna Maria Vital, a 41 year old employee at the company. Golden State Foods was a major supplier for McDonald's, reported that Vital had been attempting to remove a box that was stuck in the machinery on the factory floor when the accident occurred. After freeing the box, the robot grabbed her, causing severe crushing injuries. Despite efforts by her colleagues to free her, Vital's injuries were too severe, and she passed away a few moments later. Given that this was a death at the hands of a robot, crushing someone, being grabbed by an animatronic and related to a fast food chain. This was extremely frighteningly similar, at least in my brain, to the stories that we see coming from the FNAF games. Especially in regards to Elizabeth Afton, who gets grabbed and crushed by Baby at Circus Baby's Pizza World. Which is basically FNAF's McDonald's. And a 10 mystery incident. All right, so this one's actually FNAF. One of the oldest theories is that the shadow animatronics are the first Springlock victims. This one comes to us after the FNAF 3 phone guy dialogue that mentioned multiple and simultaneous Springlock failures. Some interpreted this as multiple Springlock suits failing at once, since the term Springlock in this situation is used to describe the suit as a whole and the individual Springlock mechanisms within the suit. So the line of multiple and simultaneous Springlock failures could mean multiple of the spring locks inside one suit failing at the same time, or multiple suits failing at the same time. This led some to theorize that previous employees were killed in the spring lock suit, which is where the shadow animatronics come from. This is supported by the fact that these shadows are of Freddy and Bonnie, the two animatronics that have spring lock versions. However, there are multiple holes to this theory. Mostly, the design of the shadow animatronics is not like the spring lock suits. Shadow Bonnie is very much modeled after Toy Bonnie, and Freddy is more like the Freddy or Golden Freddy from FNAF 1, and not like the Fred Bear we see in FNAF 4. There are also people that say if this happened, then the robots would have been decommissioned, but as we've seen from this list and the last part, that wouldn't necessarily happen. And also, if you like what we're doing here, then firstly, seek help, but also, be sure you hit like and subscribe, because I yell about various video game series all the time, and yes, it is various ones now, we're not just doing FNAF, I promise. And at 9, Wanda Holbrook. In March 2015, a robot at the Ventra Iona Mains plant in Michigan caused the of Wanda Holbrook, a 57-year-old maintenance specialist who worked at the plant. The plant, which produced car parts, was divided into sections, with robots from one section supposedly unable to enter another. However, one robot did cross into a section where Wanda was working and picked up a trailer part, which it then dropped on her head her instantly. The robot was attempting to load the trailer part onto a fixture that had already contained another trailer part, which should have been impossible, due to the fact that a fixture can only hold one trailer part at any given time. Wanda's husband William filed charges against the five companies involved in the production of the robot, and I'm pretty sure he won. But skull crushing? Come on, that's too close. In an aid Orlikin. In 2007, nine South African soldiers were killed and 14 were injured when an anti-aircraft weapon, the Orlikin GDF-005, malfunctioned during a training exercise at the Army's Combat Training Center in Northern Cape. The weapon, which is capable of firing, targeting, and engaging hostiles without human intervention, and can even reload automatically, jammed and exploded before firing 250 rounds of high explosive 33mm rounds from its two barrels at the soldiers. It's I believe that the accident may have been caused by either a software or mechanical failure, and according to Richard Young, CEO of a defense company, this type of malfunction is not uncommon, and he has witnessed similar incidents with automatic anti aircraft weapons in the past. But fortunately, no one was killed in those instances. But if that's an issue, and a not an uncommon one, maybe you should fix it. And it's 7, the Alvi machine. While working at a meat packing plant in Greeley, Colorado, a construction worker met a tragic end while installing an access catwalk. One of the large machines at the plant, the Alvi, which was used to move to box meat from a higher conveyor belt to a lower one, had not been properly turned off while the contractor was working. The heavy arm of the robot knocked him off his feet, and he then fell 10 feet onto a conveyor belt below, where his head was crushed by heavy machinery him instantly, yet again with the head crushing, jeez. Or as the accident report so eloquently puts it, quote, the Alvin machine was not de-energized nor locked out and employee number one wore no fall protection. While employee number one was connecting the platform to the catwalk adjacent to, in and around the path of travel of the inserter and extruder car of the Alvin machine, the car struck the construction worker. Employee number one fell approximately 10 feet, getting caught in the path of travel of the inserter and extruder car and traveling under the car, which crushed employee number one's head and 
helped him as the car reached its first resistance, that being the next angle iron joint of the car pathway. End quote. Gotta love the numbers. Jeez. And it's six an unnamed man. In 2015, there was a tragic incident at a Volkswagen plant in Germany in which a man was killed by a robot. The victim was part of a team that was setting up the robot, which was responsible for picking up components and assembling them into car parts. The robot was normally kept in a cage, and it was while the man was working on it inside the cage, and that's when the incident occurred. According to reports, the robot grabbed the man and pinned him against some metal sheets, causing serious injuries. The man later died as a result of those injuries. In a statement, Volkswagen said that they believed the incident was caused by human error, and it's worth noting that another worker who was inside the cage with the victim at the time was not harmed, but they weren't really sure. Or at least, of course, they're gonna say it was human error. Halfway through into number five, William Afton. Again. I say again, even though technically William was on the last list, and some may consider this the same thing, but I mean, in the context of a part two, it, it makes sense to say again. But anyway. Could William have suffered a spring lock failure before getting trapped in the spring body suit like we see in FNAF 3? It actually is possible, which explains why I say again. And it certainly appears like it could be the case in the FNAF novels. Since William is described to have scars that are consistent with a spring lock failure before becoming spring trap in the novels. So, could it have happened in the games? Could William have been the reason the spring lock suits were retired? Could he have been the victim of multiple and simultaneous spring lock failures? Since we hear of the unfortunate incident at the sister location, could it have been William? There are plenty of people that it could have been, but William having to deal with it would certainly get them put out of commission for a time at least. But with William continuing to put the suit on afterwards when the room was wet, like we see in FNAF 3's cutscene, it suggests that this theory is unlikely, but it's still possible. William is a pretty dumb guy. I've said that a lot. And at four, Volkswagen. A contractor at another Volkswagen production plant in Germany also died as a result of an incident involving a robot, according to the automaker. The incident occurred on a Monday at the plant in Bonnethal, located 100 kilometers north of Frankfurt. The victim, a 22-year-old man, was part of a team that was setting up a stationary robot and it grabbed and crushed him against a metal plate. According to Volkswagen spokesperson Heiko Hillwing, initial conclusions indicated that it was a human error that caused the incident, again, rather than a problem with the robot itself, but the robot, which can be programmed to perform various tasks in the assembly process, normally operates within a confined area at the plant, handling auto parts and manipulating them as well. Other people were there, but they weren't injured, so again, it's all up in the air. Getting close to the end of the number three, Sodesia Sterling Heights. On December 15th, 2012, an employee at Sodesia Sterling Heights, a US company that manufactures car parts, was while working inside a robot work cell. The 38-year-old male employee was inside the cell when the gates closed and he was struck from behind by a transfer robot, which crushed his chest and back. The company, which specializes in producing heavier car parts such as chassis components, used powerful robot arms to lift and maneuver these parts around the plant. In this incident, the machine should have been powered down, but it moved unexpectedly and pinned the worker against the wire of the cage, causing the fatal injuries, which is unfortunate and really makes me question why we use robots at all. But ultimately, in number two, robots surgeons. Robot-assisted surgery is a form of minimally invasive surgery that allows surgeons to perform complex procedures through small incisions or remotely using a computer console. I had one of these used on me when I was getting my appendix out. These robots have been hailed as a major advancement in 21st century medicine because they offer increased precision and control for the surgeon, which can lead to improved patient outcomes. However, it is important to note that like any medical procedure, robot-assisted surgery carries some risks. A study in the United States found that surgical robots may be linked to the deaths of 144 people between 2008 and 2013. The causes of these deaths varied, but included system errors that caused delays in the procedure and instances of machinery falling into patients' open wounds. Despite these risks, robot-assisted surgery is still widely used in the medical field because it offers many potential benefits to both patients and surgeons. For example, it can allow for less trauma to the patient during the surgery, faster recovery times, and less scarring. But overall, the use of surgical robots in the medical field is a complex issue that requires careful consideration for both the surgeon and the patient for, you know, risks and benefits. And either way, it's up to you. And finally, in a number one, Regina Elsa. In June 2016, 20-year-old Regina Elsa was in a robot-related accident just two weeks before her wedding. The incident occurred at Agen USA, a South Korean-owned plant in Caseta, Alabama that produced parts for Hyundai and Kia vehicles. On the day of the accident, Elsa and some co-workers were attempting to repair a faulty robot, despite the fact that they weren't supposed to do so. 
They had tried to reach the maintenance department, but no one answered their calls, so they decided to fix the robot themselves, probably out of fear that they would get in trouble if the robot wasn't working. Unfortunately, the robot suddenly restarted and pushed Elsa against another machine, causing serious injuries. She was taken to the East Alabama Medical Center and airlifted to UAB Hospital, but she died the following morning. An investigation into the incident revealed that Agent USA had committed several safety violations in order to maximize profits, and in fact, the US Department of Labor had fined the company and two staffing agencies $2.7 million for 27 safety violations just two weeks before this incident. The inquiry also found that Agent USA overworked its employees and encouraged them to repair the faulty machines, which explains why they were doing it. Number 10, Bite of 87. Well, we don't really know for sure if this is correct, as the Bite of 87 is still not fully confirmed in terms of all the details. It is possible that it was the result of a spring lock failure. It's believed that the bite of 87 led to the fatal injury of a guest when the frontal lobe of their brain was badly damaged in an incident related to Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria. Now, based on the bite of 83, we can imagine it may have been a similar incident where someone basically stuck their head inside an animatronic and kind of had it chomped. Or it could have been something else that happened. But either way, if it was similar to the bite of 83, or even if it wasn't, it seems likely that that a spring lock failure could be possible as the suits may have still been in use at that time. As the suits may still have been in use at the time that this terrible incident occurred. Now, some might say they stopped being used after the bite of 83, but with a timeline this wonky, I don't think we have anything that is 100% concrete, conclusive yet in regards to when spring lock suits stopped being used across the board forever. Also, I feel like there are times maybe where they were like, ah, let's stop using them for like a bit and then. Ah, uh, we think we fixed them and then they're still, you know, dysfunctional. Because that's just how spring lock suits are. I would never even go near one of those things. Death trap. Number nine, William Afton and the leak. Probably one of the most iconic when it comes to spring lock failures is William Afton. William Afton from the games, that is. In this version of the story, William Afton basically got destroyed by these spring locks. He was fully impaled by the spring locks in the spring lock bonnie suit after trying to escape the ghosts of his victims. He thought hiding inside the spring bonnie suit would protect him, but hey, he was wrong. It turned out that there was water on the floor, which when he touched, caused the spring locks in the suit to loosen, or you know, water that possibly dripped down from him, and also his breath. This caused the spring locks to malfunction, they fully released, and impaled William, ultimately causing his death. However, this is William Afton, so even dying would not keep him dead forever. It only keep him dead for a little while. We later learned that one of the vengeful spirits, or possibly a pair of them, cursed William to experience the pain that they had felt, thereby extending his life indefinitely, no matter the pain he suffered. Which is how William Afton can be a shambling corpse, but also somehow still alive. And friends, before I move on to this next spot on the list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Gaming, and if you love FNAF 2, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8. Can you spring lock a ghost? To answer this question, we could turn to the Fazbear Frights book 135 AM, and one of the stories within its pages, titled The New Kid. In this story, a young boy named Devin befriends the new kid at school, Kelsey. However, while his other friend Mick seems to really like Kelsey, and at first, Devin does too, eventually Devin becomes jealous of Kelsey. When Kelsey seemingly ditches them one day when they're all hanging out, Devin decides to get revenge on him for doing this. Finding a new hangout spot, a now abandoned former Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, Devin Devin dares Kelsey to put on a spring lock suit. Kelsey does this and begins dancing around. But doing so, of course, triggers the spring locks within the suit to release, seemingly impaling him. While initially, Devin and Mick leave Kelsey there for dead, Devin eventually returns to investigate. Devin eventually returns to investigate, with Mick wondering if Kelsey might still be alive. When Devin does return, he doesn't see Kelsey in the suit, but later spots a black haired ghostly figure within. It is implied that Kelsey is some kind of spirit of vengeance, possibly one of the spirits from the game lord that possessed Golden Freddy. And if you're wondering how we know that, well, later in the book we see that Kelsey is alive and well, seemingly after he seemed to have been spring locked, so either he he has superpowers or he a ghost. Number 7, The Amazing Escape. William Afton in the books is much more lucky or perhaps just more brilliant than his video game counterpart. At least when it comes to dodging spring locks somehow. Like in the games, he ends up getting spring locked, but instead of being killed by this experience, he miraculously survives, seeming to somehow 
pull a Harry Houdini and just escape that. Well, Charlie activates the spring locks in the suit he's wearing at the end of the novel Five Nights at Freddy's The Silver Eyes. We learn in the next book, The Twisted Ones, that the blood found in the scene ends up being analyzed in a lab and found to be fake blood. Finally, in the fourth closet, it is confirmed that William Afton, while harmed, miraculously survived being spring locked. I don't know how this is possible, but it's a thing that happened. Pretty impressive considering in most other cases, it's pretty much a death sentence. Number 6. Triggered by wriggling off many arenas This is probably my favorite consequence when it comes to the spring locks malfunctioning. Likely because you yourself actually get to experience failure in a way. But obviously not in real life because that would be awful and horrible and extremely painful. Instead, you experience it in game. So although you can't feel it, you can't imagine what it would feel like, which honestly is also terrifying to do. This time when the spring locks fail, it is as a result of your movement. You are the one who must wriggle to shake off the many arenas, which are climbing up the suit and attempting to kind of climb into it with you. If this happens enough times, the mini arenas jump scare will get triggered, implying your death by mini arenas. However, if you also wriggle too much to keep them off you without winding the spring locks back up enough, you will trigger the spring locks release, which will also result in your death by being impaled by suit parts, which are released by those spring locks. Yikes. Number 5. The Fate of Shadow Freddy Shadow Freddy is thought by some in regards to lore to have been a possible springlock victim. The consequences of this employee's springlock failure would be, of course, that they died. That's right, people believe that Shadow Freddy, who appears to be somewhat ghostly in nature, is actually the spirit of a former Freddy's employee, who died while wearing a springlock Freddy suit. It's believed that for one reason or another, the suit malfunctioned, murdering its wearer. As a result, Shadow Freddy was born to haunt its former workplace and was also likely one of the reasons that spring lock suits stopped being used, at least temporarily. Although apparently not soon enough as there were other failures that occurred possibly even after this one. Number 4. The Fate of RWQFSFASXC Some believe that not only is Shadow Freddy a victim of the spring locks failing, but so is the shadowy figure of RWQFSFASXC. They believe that this shadowy Bonnie was another employee who instead of being killed by the spring lock Freddy suit, met their end while inside the spring lock Bonnie suit, which also also failed. My question is if these employees happen to both die as a result of wearing and using the spring lock suits and the suits malfunctioning, did they die on the same day? Because if not, why would you ever continue to use these suits as a company? And why would you ever, as an employee, agree to get in another one? Unless one of them was hired after the other one and like no one told them about what happened to the last person to put on one of those suits? Still. Legal liability right there. Like, my alarms are going off for like lawsuits. Of course, this was only a theory anyways, and actually one that Scott claimed was incorrect. In regards to the true origins of both Shadow Freddy and RWQFSFASXC. Number 3. Payback Going back to the Fazbear Fright story, the new kid from the 1.35am book, Kelsey wasn't the only one to get spring locked in the story. When Devin returns to the abandoned Freddy's to see if Kelsey might still be alive, he notices the suit is empty. He thinks he sees something further inside and so he decides to reach into the mouth of the suit, only for the suit to seemingly clamp down on his arm. Of course, you should never do that. If you see something and you're like, oh, maybe I'll put my arm in this thing where my arm could get stuck, don't. Don't do it. The more he struggles, the more he seems to get sucked into the suit. Sure, this isn't so much a spring lock failure from the inside, you know, and no one's wearing the suit in some of these. It's more reminiscent of the bite of 83 because I don't think there was anyone in that suit. But this is still a spring lock suit failing. So while different, I still consider it to be a failure with consequences. Consequences being, you know, Devin also likely died. Number 2. The Bite of 83 Definitely among the most memorable spring lock failures is the Bite of 83. Now some of you are going to say, Amanda, this is not a spring lock failure. There was no one in that suit that we know of, which sure, 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 sure. But still, it's a spring lock suit and it failed, so I'm counting it. Anyways, I feel like the Bite of 83 hasn't been fully confirmed really at all, but many theorize it to be true. Many theorize that our theory is true that we have. 
so far because this is all we got, all right? We grab all these little Easter eggs and then we do our best to try to figure out what's going on in the narrative. Now, why do we believe that this could even be a spring lock failure? Well, one, the crying child was crying when he was held up to give Fredbear a kiss, which many theorize is the reason the jaws of the animatronic bear clamped down, as a result of the tears making the gears wet and causing a spring lock malfunction. Two, we have been led to believe that Fredbear was a spring lock suit, so that's also why people suspect that the bite of 83 could also be a spring lock malfunction. Number one, multiple. While Shadow Freddy and RWQFS FASXC may have been debunked as spring lock failure victims by Scott himself, this theory didn't come out of nowhere. In fact, many thought that they were among those generally referred to in FNAF 3 during Phone Guy's recording for night number four. Here, Phone Guy mentions that the spring lock suits are being discontinued as a result of an unfortunate incident at the sister location involving multiple and simultaneous spring lock failures. Which, I gotta say, it makes sense to me too, because I'm like, what were all these multiple spring lock failures, what does that entail, and how many were there? Oh boy. Unit 10, moisture sensitive. One of the things that I find to be the absolute dumbest thing about not only these damned suits, but also the FNAF series in general, is how stupid it is that the spring lock mechanisms inside the spring lock suits fail with moisture. Sure, it explains why William gets spring locked because the room was dripping and whatever, the ceiling was leaking, and it makes everyone confused with Crying Child because he was crying. Despite that not being a spring lock failure, everyone thought it was because he was crying and, you know, moisture. But in actual practice, that is a horribly flawed mechanic. Like, if me breathing and sweating is going to make the metal bits snap on me, why would I do it in a hot robotic suit. That seems like a horrible and stupid idea. Like, yes, okay, put me in a hot and sweaty environment that gets me killed if it gets wet. That's not a liability at all. I get sweaty wearing my freaking Doctor Strange costume, okay? Imagine a giant suit full of metal, okay? That would also be heavy as hell to walk around in too, only making the sweating worse. In a nine designer. You see, there are a decent amount of people that for some reason think that these spring lock suits were made with pure intentions. By William Afton. This kind of goes hand in hand with the idea that William started killing after losing his kids, but we know that that's not the case. Since thanks to the fast facts found in FNAF AR's files, we know that the fun time animatronics were some of the first ones ever made, and considering the abilities of Baby and her comrades, we know that they were made in order to kill. Meaning that even if the Springlock animatronics were the very first animatronics ever, it's reasonable to assume that they were also designed with death in mind, which explains multiple things. But honestly, if William made the fun times with death in mind, it's likely that he did the same with the spring locks, you get me? And if you think that a suit that can snap at a moment's notice and shove pounds of metal, bars, cogs, gears, and chains, and more into the same space as your body would be made with pure intentions, you should stop watching these videos and go to a therapist. Seriously. I have a number. In at 8, no bonus. The spring lock mechanism is probably the most intuitive thing that FNAF's world invented. The ability to move robotic parts out of the way enough for a human to fit inside is nuts. And while it may be dangerous, we also drive over 100 kilometers or miles or whatever per hour in huge metal death boxes, so we can't necessarily complain about it. Um, and while yes, they have their faults, there is nothing compared to the ability to be both animatronic and suit. That's an incredible feat of technology, and I'm, I'm sure they play into it with the marketing. Like, I mean, we hear the phone guy tapes from FNAF 3 talking about these things, okay? And he never mentions a bonus or anything like that for you risking your life with one of these damn suits. And even if you end up getting spring locked, there doesn't really seem to be any compensation package for your loved ones. Hell, if you die, you may not even get your severance. Eh, actually, maybe that's why they do it. Your family can file a lawsuit since, you know, you died on the job, but that's a lengthy court battle against a massive company with a serial killer who has yet to be caught at the front lines. It's not really gonna do much good for your fam. Uh, so the fact that you don't get a bonus if you get in one of these suits, let alone get spring locked, no thanks. It's a red flag. Swipe left. And it's seven implications. Now, while the term spring lock is used in real life, it's totally different from the actual FNAF mechanism. I'm certain most of you got the whole spring locks are real line from spring locks and you, how not to die remastered. It's a thread on the FNAF wiki. However, actual spring locks are just locks that use springs, okay? From my research, what I gathered is that a spring lock in real life is in simplest terms, a 
spring lock. It's like if your front door's deadbolt was on a spring. Every other instance talking about real spring locks or just ends up bringing you back or quotes this page. So it's kind of circular logic, okay? You can't use evidence within the thing that you're trying to prove as proof that it is real. It's like plugging a power bar into itself. It doesn't work. You can't use the same article to prove that spring locks are real, okay? Because they're not. At least their game form isn't. But if the spring lock failure was real, I think the implications of like all of this being real in general is like one of the worst things. You get it? Like it, it's definitely in the top 10. Get it? It's a little meta content joke for you because this is a top 10 list. It's in the top 10. And it's sick and required. The spring lock suits themselves are an occupational hazard that they didn't really need to create. Like these things are hella deadly and both William and Henry allow for their employees to wear them. Like, goddamn, okay? Just like, just make a separate suit for the animatronic characters. For, like, for the employees, okay? Like the people who run your business. You know, they are the ones who make you the money. So, you know, they don't end up dying from robotic parts replacing their internal organs. OSHA would have been all over these goddamn suits if it was real in this universe, but apparently I guess it's not. Uh, and honestly, it's probably required by your contract to wear these suits at work. And if you refuse, you're probably gonna get fired, especially considering how they started getting ready to fire Jeremy because he saw a glitch trap in Help Wanted. So why wouldn't they fire you for not wearing your suit if it's in your contract? Even if you claim it was to protect your life, they'd find another reason that you couldn't really fight against, so. Especially, you know, when a serial killer is the CEO. Halfway through into number five, comments. I've mentioned this in previous videos, mostly to explain why there won't ever be an actual, real FNAF restaurant that you'll be able to walk into, and it still remains true since we're only getting a virtual diner that you can only order online. However, I think that one of the worst things still, and especially when it comes to these suits, is the goddamn comments about them. You wanna know a comment that I saw yesterday? Well, yesterday for me as I was writing this, Wednesday for you. Okay, I just, I saw someone say that they want to be springlocked. What? Why? Why would you want to be springlocked? Do you know how messed up that is? You're saying that you want to be killed by this thing? Cause there, there's some hotlines that you should call. Like why on sweet heaven's earth would you want to be springlocked? Do you know how absolutely agonizingly painful that would be? That would be one of the worst things imaginable, okay? Holy sweet lord baby Jesus W Christ. That would be one of the worst ways to go, if not the worst way. Uh, at least like as far as like actually could happen goes, I think at least, okay? Cause like a volcano would suck, but it's a bit unrealistic. It, it's a bad idea, okay? Stop doing this, stop saying this. Okay, talk to a doctor. And it for Afton. I talked about how the implications would apply to like how everything in FNAF would have happened in real life if one of these was real, but one of the worst implications would be that Afton was real. This man has caused me enough pain and suffering already. I don't need him to be like an actual person, especially considering how Springtrap would be set loose next year and then everything after it would happen. This channel would probably be a true crime channel and not a gaming channel. I'd probably have tried proving it myself and maybe even become a PI so that I can do so. But straight up, this man has already caused me enough grief and suffering and, and loss and tears of, of pain at night in my life and it's made me lose enough of it already to him so yeah him being real would just be the worst thing that I can imagine for me uh, however that's only if the spring lock failure thing was also real there are worse things for people in the FNAF universe though um, not in real life such as in at three paperwork one of the worst things for the survivors after a spring lock failure has to be the paperwork that is associated with it cuz goddamn someone dying in your building is one thing someone dying in your building because of something in your building is another and then add on to that the fact that they were your employee and probably forced into that suit without like because of their contract and you'll be filing reports until you have to retire okay especially because one mistake on those papers means like even more paperwork and I don't really know anyone who likes to do paperwork personally I hate it but that's also because my ADHD makes me like it makes it unbearable uh, for me honestly like it's even tough to write scripts sometimes but I mean I eventually I have to but like that that's where my brain thrives you know in that stressful environment which is not not good for my health, but if it was that kind of paperwork, um, I would honestly just quit because there was no way in hell that I would even want to attempt to keep my focus on that um, when I can just scroll through TikTok or YouTube instead. So yeah, no thanks. But ultimately in a number two, replaced. 
Oh yeah, don't forget your bones being replaced with metal ones. Yeah, like sure, there's there's surgery for people who need repairs or replacements, okay? I think like hip replacements are probably the most common actually. However, uh, those have whole processes behind them to ensure a fast recovery and you know, survival, not being infected. All of a sudden being shoved full of metal bones where normal ones used to be, uh, that's, that's a guaranteed infection at the very least, especially considering how, you know, your normal bones have to go somewhere else. Uh, and whether they're just crushed and then spread out inside you or just pushed out the other side, you're going to be in a hell of a lot of pain. Uh, plus, you know, probably not alive, uh, which I guess is a good thing since you won't really have to deal with the intense pain for too long, hopefully. Um, but this actually makes me think, if you replace all of your bones with metal ones, are you still you? Is this like a ship of Theseus moment? Am I about to have the, like a WandaVision finale? Or like, are we just our brain? And if we are our brain, does that mean that if we, if we have a brain transplant, do we become another person despite it still being my body? And does that mean that we're just like a brain piloting a bone mech with meat armor? Oh no, existential crisis! And finally, in a number one, death. I mean, don't get me wrong, okay? But the first, the, wor the worst thing about a spring lock failure has to be the whole death part, right? It, ignore my mumbling. I mean, honestly, okay, it's, it's obviously not for some of you, given the whole comments thing earlier, but the only reason you wouldn't die in a spring lock suit is because you're a main character and need to be around for the story. And then you're just in agonizing pain for the rest of your life. Uh, yeah, the only people who have su survived a spring lock failure, well, confirmed, is William. So... Yeah, yeah, and you know, he's like the main antagonist of the game and was only able to survive since the spirit of a victim was keeping him alive. And in the books, William also ended up getting springlocked before, uh, but then got out of the suit since Dave Miller, who was revealed to be William, has scars from a previous springlock failure from before he becomes Springtrap in the books. So the only one who can ever really survive seems to be William, and he's survived it twice. Uh, anyone else is boned, uh, and personally, I'd rather not die by having millions of small metal bits. Uh, and several dozen large ones shoved into my body, uh, trying to replace my body, I would rather die peacefully in my sleep uh, with Chica's hand around my throat. And it's had scooped. Now, I know you may be mad and think that this is a stupid point, but hear me out, okay? The scooper may seem like a weird but normal thing, at least by FNAF standards at first, but with the blueprint revealing how this thing actually works, it's an incredible piece of technology that is far worse than a spring lock suit. It can inject whatever it ends up scooping with remnant, which is a molten metal possessed by souls. And assuming that my theory about Michael being a robot was wrong, keeping a person alive after removing their insides. It's capable of doing that. Replacing their parts with robot parts and then having those robotic parts leave the body but still have the person be alive. In essence, it makes that person just a walking case of flesh that is still somehow able to stand up on its own. Unless it didn't actually remove anything and it just like opened him up, but then again, it would still require some serious juice to keep him alive after that. That's pretty damn impressive and it's also terrifying. I'd rather have the instant death of a spring lock suit than having my bones replaced with robotic ones. Yeah, no thanks. At least while I'm awake. Replace my bones with metal ones when I'm a, when I'm asleep, so I can just like. In at nine, working at Freddy's. Working at Freddy's would suck. Like, if we're in so much danger, why are we staying for the Five Nights? Okay, do do we need a job that bad? Putting like the lore reasons aside, right? But the real question is, other than that, how is Fazbear Entertainment even allowed to have employees in an environment like this? Already working there, you would have to deal with the possibility of a spring lock failure, and Henry and William just letting the people who run your business and making them money wear the suits is stupid, okay? Like, put this on or you're fired, but don't end up dying from robotic parts replacing your internal organs in the hot suits that fail with moisture. Like, seriously? Want to talk about health and safety? What about the having actual corpses stuffed into animatronic suits that are in front of how many kids every single day? Especially when one of them is known for loving pizza and in the VR game is shown in her FNAF 1 form to actually be shoving pizza into the various joints of her body. Plus, five nights of animatronics trying to kill me? <laughs> yeah, no thanks, okay? I'm glad you fire me at the end of it, but honestly, I'd have quit as soon as, like, the first phone call ended. No, no thanks. Phone guy's like, oh, they might move? No, I'm done. And it ain't grabbed. Elizabeth Afton getting grabbed by baby is one of the most terrifying moments in the series. Possibly because Crying Child saw it, which would explain the stomach mouths on the nightmare animatronics. However, if we were to, like, see 
this from crying child's perspective, whether that detail is, is canon or not. If we saw it from his perspective, oh my freaking god. That would be so utterly terrifying, I would stand still. I wouldn't know what to do. Okay, how do you explain why a kid is like hiding in the bushes while his sister is getting grabbed by an animatronic claw? Okay, you don't. She was just trying to get ice cream. It's horrible. It's shocking. God, especially considering that Elizabeth ends up turning into an absolute psychopath after this, okay? Like, Elizabeth is nuts. But still, like, I don't know. It's all, it's that thought of just watching someone get grabbed. Like, sure, maybe for Elizabeth it wasn't that bad because, you know, she kind of was crazy, apparently. But still, but like, watching it happen, that's just f***ed up. That's, that's a horrible thing to watch happen. It's worse than a spring mock, definitely. And it's 7 WWWAD. Ah, yes. What would William Afton do? Because honestly, being him would suck worse than a spring lock failure. I mean, like, I rip on Elizabeth all the time for wanting to impress her father in FNAF 6 like I was just doing, but I'm right to, okay? This man is an absolute psycho and not even a smart one. I have made so many videos about how dumb William is. Like, what if William Afton was smart? Top 10 William Afton dumbest moments. William Afton's luckiest moments. And that last one was just me ripping on him again because somehow, despite being this stupid and insane he managed to not get caught. Every single time I talk about how stupid he is, I talk about how he could have done it better, which is why in various videos I will say hi to the jury because I know for a fact that if anything ever happens in this area, they are coming to me first because I know how to be a psycho. But still, come on, that's it. That's the number, okay? Being springlocked would suck, but William Afton sucks harder. Wait, no, 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 that, that sounds like, no, 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 wait, wait, no, don't cut me off. I didn't mean, and it's six doors. You knew that this was going to be on the list, okay? If you've been on this channel at all, you know that I hate the goddamn mother-loving doors in this game. Why do they open when the power is out? That doesn't make sense, okay? If it's an electromagnet, like everyone keeps saying in the comments whenever I bring this up, those require power to turn on. So if anything, it would be constant them power to keep the doors open rather than keep them closed. Gravity does not work in reverse. If the magnet is off when the door is up, it would just fall down. I, I get that it's supposed to be for gameplay purposes, okay, but, but what in-universe thing makes this make sense? People say that it's a, like a safety issue, so like if there's a fire or whatever, you can leave, but that's what windows are for! <laughs> I am almost positive that there should be a window in that room, and if there's not, that's yet another OSHA violation that they need to address, okay? There is no conceivable way in any reality that the doors should work that way, but they do. They do, and it makes me mad. Like, why would you, why would you do this, okay, Scott? Why? Sky Daddy Scott, I'm bringing it back. Why? Some people, like I said, it's, say it's a fire safety thing, but like, no. If the building runs out of power, how could the doors open? Electromagnets use power to be on. So like, even if it is a fire thing, how are they keeping them up? I don't get it. <laughs> Also, if you made it through this far, subscribe. You clearly enjoy the video, um, or just me going insane. And there's plenty more of that on this channel, no matter which one you liked, so you're welcome. How are we doing number five? Being a cop. Being a cop in the FNAF universe must be a horrible idea. Because not only are you now a cop, but you're also a cop in the FNAF universe, which for the sake of this list is working at the uh, precinct that failed to capture William Afton, okay? So now the public ridicules you, they don't think you can actually do your job, and you probably got your budget cut so badly that you're maybe able to get one squad car, but that's it. One squad car for the whole station. Plus, now you gotta deal with multiple arson cases and the fact that Freddy's keeps coming back and more kids keep going missing. I don't know, there's a weird purple guy walking around that smells bad, but it's like also like a skin condition so you can't really say anything about it without absolutely destroying the slightest bit of reputation that you have left as an officer in this universe. Like, that's in essence what it's like to be a cop in FNAF. Okay, or what it would realistically be like. Because, honestly, these dudes didn't check inside the bleeding, death-smelling animatronics when kids went missing in that building. 
So, I, I, I get it. They're either ridiculed by the public or you just lose the majority of your IQ once you join up with them. That's, those are the only two explanations. It could be both as well. In it for MCI. The missing children's incident is definitely worse than a Springlock failure. I mean, the one failure that we know about that happened in the games only affected one person and a horrible person at that. So I mean, just by sheer numbers alone, the missing children's incident is definitely worse. But not even just that, okay? Those parents must have been in a rough spot. Not only did they lose their kids, but they also have to deal with the incompetence of the in-universe police and the whole plot requirement of Afton getting away with it to actually continue the series. So, yeah, like I said, there were literally animatronics leaking mucus and blood that people were comparing to human corpses and they weren't actually investigated. So, do you know how insanely infuriating that would be? Okay, I'm surprised that Henry was the one to put Afton down and not someone else. Like, yeah, he got springlocked in 93, but that was seven years after the missing children's incident. Had I been one of those parents, I would not have cared about the prison sentence, okay? And I don't think that anyone would have really judged me for it. I think that they would have thanked me and posted my bail. I mean, I would have lost the trial, but still. <laughs> Hi, Jerry. And at three, Henry Emily. I get that springlock failures suck, but even the good guys in this series are kind of trash. FNAF 6 was supposed to be the end of the Afton story. That's what Henry set out to do in that game. Make sure that nobody remembered what happened there despite the parents of the victims remembering and the various other news sources covering it. However, the dumbass figured that the first fire didn't work, so a second one is definitely going to. Uh, and the fact that he was so competent in this plan for whatever reason, that he actually let himself die in the process to make sure that nobody remembered what happened, um, is dumb. Like I said, dude, even if Henry and William and his kids are dead, the parents of the victims still know. And as we learned in Security Breach, there are other parents who remember too, citing the missing children from the Pizzaplex as happening again, which means they know it happened before. Maybe if Henry had some balls, William wouldn't have been able to possess Vanny and come back yet again to wreak even more havoc, or I don't know, maybe everything would have been fine. Uh, the Pizzaplex missing children are a direct result of Henry being worse than his spring Springlock failure, and you can't tell me any different. Springlock failures have only resulted in one canonical death in the series, or death, but Henry has resulted in a lot more. And ultimately, Anna number two, being an Afton. Okay, look, Springlock failures are horrible. Okay, yes, and yes, William is a horrible person, but being just an Afton in this universe must be the worst thing ever. It's like the worst spawn point in existence, because every Afton has been subjected to a horrible fate. It's like if Sean Bean is cast to play a character, you know that they're going to die. It's that, but if you're an Afton, you're going to suffer a horrible fate. Okay, let's go through the list, shall we? Here we go. William, springlocked, possessed, forced to suffer for like 60 years at least. Charlotte grabbed by baby, going on to possess the animatronic, then joins a group of other animatronics that crawl inside of her big brother to escape an underground facility, and then gets kicked out of the greater collective, and then goes on to try to impress her father that caused her death in the first place by creating the robot that killed her. Talk about daddy issues. Then we have Crying Child, who we don't even know this kid's name. He watched his sister get crushed, he got crushed by a robot, and then he goes on to possess his brother and makes him suffer before realizing that it's not his fault. Then, speaking of the brother Michael, he blamed himself for killing his brother. He then spent his whole life trying to undo his father's horrible acts, and he himself was scooped in stuff full of robot parts, including his sister, which is, again, a whole other issue. He was made into a purple, bruised man that everyone was scared of, and he was finally burnt to death in FNAF 6 by Henry without even being given the option to survive. So yeah, being an Afton is cursed. And that's not even talking about how Gregory or Vanessa could be Aftons. And finally, in at number one, the lore! Oh, uh, the worst thing about FNAF is the lore. Yeah, having to try to figure it out or even think about it or try to give it any coherent links is probably the most horrific thing that you can try to attempt in regards to the series, yes, but also literally at all. Do not try this, please. I get messages on Instagram saying like, oh, I have a FNAF theory and I was hoping we could talk about it like I, I appreciate that you want to talk to me about it as opposed to like Matt Pat or someone famous maybe because I'm more likely to reply because I'm not famous but like the best advice that I can give to you is if you value any shred of your sanity do not try this do not attempt to put any shred of logic into FNAF it will break you hey okay? do you think that I wanted to do this do you think that I planned on doing this for two years no 
I read one comment that said I see a FNAF in the thumbnail and I click and it drove me so far into the madness that I'm basically the joker of the FNAF community. People don't like me because I made a joke video about the worst FNAF fan games that included games that people loved and now it's on the goddamn YouTuber wiki as a controversy. People get mad at you for misgendering fictional robots. They're robots and not real. People were furious with the Pop Goes creator because of that and I'm like, what? What? Dude, just don't do it, okay? I'm not gatekeeping. I am I'm genuinely trying to help you. I want you to be okay. So please, save yourself from the toxicity and let my heart and soul be the one to suffer all of this torture. And I will keep doing so.